Hi there friends. As it is snowing again today, um, I'm going to be working on chasing down that P0125 check engine light that keeps coming up. Um, I ordered an OE Toyota um, coolant temp sensor, but it hasn't come in yet. And I have to start driving here soon to test out the new suspension before my longer drive. So that's not really an option for me to wait any longer. So I did end up going and getting an import direct coolant temp sensor. Um, the Toyota one from factory does not come with a crush washer. They say that that crush washer that's on the vehicle is reusable. I've heard horror stories of people trying to reuse them where they never seal properly again. So I just said, screw it. We're going to get an import direct one and we're going to go from there. Um, I'm just going to do a quick DIY speedrun video of me getting to and removing and installing the new coolant temp sensor. So that's going to be my plan as it stands right now. Um, I'm also going to be adjusting the torsion bars. I'll do that at the end for anybody who wants to stick around because after adding on the new suspension, this thing sits quite a bit higher and I want to adjust them down a little bit to make sure that the truck is level. So anyways, that's what I got going on today. Stick around. I'll show you my process and we'll get right to it. For starters, and I guess I should have prefaced for anybody who doesn't know, this is a 3.4 liter 5VZ FE V6 out of a 1996 Toyota T100. So that is what we're working on today. This is the import direct um, coolant temp sensor for this particular truck. Let me see if I can get it to you without too much glare. Hold on. Um, maybe not. Anyways, the part number on that is 17-1408. And I will show you what it looks like because on the Chevys, um, it's a prong, but on the Toyotas, it is actually a two pin connector. And then you can see the crush washer there. So anyways, we're going to start taking some of this stuff on the front of the engine apart to get to it. Because if I can show you the coolant temp sensor is right, right down well it's actually kind of hard to see but it's going to be uh right down in here so i am going to pull this cover off for the timing we'll inspect the timing belt while i'm in there and then we will get to it so i will show you in just a sec okay so here's what we're working with folks i went ahead and loosened up the clamp on the radiator hose you don't have to remove the hose just slide the clamp forward so that you can slide the cover forward and the cover has these funny little uh, cap bolts on them. Um, there are six going around the perimeter. There's one here, one here, one here. There's another one down underneath on that side. There is, if I pop this back in place, one right there. And then there's another one and it's really hard to show you and it's even harder to get to that is underneath this clip right here. So anyways, uh, once you have those off, the, oh, those uh, all the way around are 10 millimeter, by the way. Once you have those off, you can slide your timing cover forward a little bit. And then first off, I'm just going to inspect my timing belt, which doesn't look too bad, actually. Um, I don't know when the last time this was replaced, but the belt looks like it's in good condition. I don't see any weird fraying or anything or any cracks in it. I don't feel anything weird if I run my finger across it. So that's good. Um, but anyways, this is what I wanted to show you before, and that is that right there is what I'm going to replace. That little blue or green is the, um, that is the coolant temp sensor. And right now, it's in a spot where it's going to be really hard to get out because it is underneath this fuel line right here. So this right here that I'm rubbing my finger on, that is a fuel line connected with two banjo bolts. And there's going to be fuel in there. So I don't know how I'm going to be able to get a socket onto that to get it out um, where it's at right now. So I may have to remove that fuel line. So I'm going to get this unplugged and hopefully out of the way. And then we will see if I'm going to have to get these uh, this fuel line off, these banjo bolts out of here. So that way I can get to the coolant temp sensor. So I will check in with you guys in just a minute. Okay, checking back in. I did go ahead and pop off the banjo bolt and set it right there on the left side of the fuel rail. I stuck some towels down in there just because a little bit of fuel will leak out. Um, those bolts for me were a 17 mil 
and I couldn't get enough room between here and where the head of the bolt was, um, so I used the old two wrench method to break them free. It did not take a whole lot of pressure, just so you know. Um, you do want to be aware that there are some crush washers. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it right there, but there's one crush washer on each side of the fuel rail. So there's one on this side and there's one on that side. So the one that is on the banjo bolt side is currently on the banjo bolt, and the one that is on the fuel rail side is still on the fuel rail and I'm hoping that's where it stays. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move this towel and I'm gonna reveal to you what I just saw. There we go, no fuel down in the bottom of there. And that is what we're going for. And I think I can tell why I'm throwing an engine code because that thing is just corroded and nasty. So I'm going to pop that out of there. I believe that is a 19 mil or three quarter. So I'm gonna get the clip off pull the clip out of the way, probably clean it, and then get to the actual coolant temp sensor itself. So I will show you that in just a sec. And there you have it, folks. That is nasty. That is what we're looking at right there for the coolant temp sensor. Um, I can absolutely see that this is a replacement sensor. The Toyota factory ones are gray. So hopefully this is not the same problem that I'm going to be having in the future if I put in this aftermarket sensor. But at least I have the Toyota one still coming, so I can replace it if need be. Um, the plug, for what it's worth, um, was not messed up. The plug actually is nice and clean, and you can just depress the plug from the middle point here it's kind of hard to see when it's down in there but you can depress the plug from the middle point i don't know if you'll be able to see that and then it just pivots free so yeah um i'm gonna clean up that area a little bit you can see my coolant sitting in there just at the top um i'm gonna try as hard as i can not to get any crud down in there and i'm going to get as much of that uh, stuff out of there as i can before i put the new sensor in there so you can see if i barely bump the truck that that maybe you can't hold on let me give you a better angle there you go you can see that that coolant is just dancing in there so it's right at the top so i'm going to be very careful to not get any crud into the fuel rail or into the coolant as i clean up that area a little bit so i will check in with you guys momentarily and there she is all nice and happy in her new home i'm going to get everything plugged back in and buttoned up and get that fuel rail back on so I'm going to make sure that I do not drip anything down into there. In fact, the very next thing that I'm going to do is connect the electrical connector and get the fuel rail back on. So that way I can plug up uh, the two things that I've found to be the highest common denominator of failure. So I'm going to get that taken care of right now. Okay, so there is everything buttoned back up except for the timing cover being back on. Um, pro tip, you should just put those banjo bolts in hand tight and do the last little bit of tightening with the wrench. You do not want any binding or grinding when you are putting those back in. If you do have any, take your banjo bolts out and clean them and put them back in. Um, so I'm going to put the timing cover back on and start it up, let it go through a heat cycle and see if I throw a code. I have opted not to do the torsion bars in this video because it's already dragging on and I will uh, spin the camera around, go to the truck, um, and then we will see if I throw an engine code. So I'll check in with you guys in just a sec. And there she is, idling, nice and happy. A lot of work to be done on this truck still, although it does look pretty good doing what it's doing. I am consistently checking the clearance and I recognize that at tuck at turn, that would not be so hot, but for the time being, it doesn't seem like it'll be a problem, so I'm not gonna worry about it. And although we are starting to get warm, I do not see a check engine light yet. So I'm gonna go for a little drive ski. I'm gonna go to the gas station, I'm gonna fill her up, and then I will, uh, if there's a problem, I will report back. If there's not a problem, I will catch you guys in the next one. Man, that high clearance rear bumper is going to be so nice when I get it on. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I will keep up with you all later on. See that new suspension, the shackles. Man, everything on this truck is so cool. And I will do a 500-mile review on these tires. I'm coming up on that fairly soon. So um, I've got about 280 miles on them now, but I've been driving quite a bit. So anyways, I will uh, update everybody when I can. And other than that, have a great week.